Well, hi everyone and greetings from Northern Michigan. This is Bob the Science Guy. You know, the other day I put out a video on this and some other wonderful shots of Mount Rainier casting a shadow at the setting sun onto the clouds above the mountaintop. This, of course, is a proof of the rotating spherical Earth and how sunsets occur. In order for a shadow such as this to be cast on the clouds above the mountain, the light source, or the sun, must be below the summit of Mount Rainier. Now a flat earther with the very appropriate name of Pea Brain tried to challenge me on that and won my first flat earth pet rock contest. Now I took him down so badly I ended up taking the meme that he had made of me and using it for the thumbnail. It's my meme now. Now, he's gone out and made another video. So, I guess we're going to have to revisit our friend Mr. P-Brain. This is a follow-up to my last video about Bob the Science Guy, where he looks at a photo of this, uh, the shadow coming off Mount Rainier, and proclaims that we live on a spinning ball because of this photo. And so what this video is about is I'm going to show that this is actually proof that we live on a flat Earth. Oh, this should be good. In order for the mountain to cast that shadow on the clouds above it, the sun had to be coming from an angle or an altitude lower than the peak of the mountain. This is not something that really needs to be explained most of the time. It's rather self-evident. Well, let's go ahead and unpack this word salad one point at a time. Now my first point was that most people could look at this photograph and realize that with the shadow going up from Mount Rainier, the light source had to be below the peak of Mount Rainier. That's not an appeal to consensus fallacy. That's a statement that most people, when presented with a fact like that, would recognize it as a fact. God, I love it when flat earthers try and use logical fallacies. It's just adorable. Next, he questions whether or not I'm really sure that those clouds are above the peak of Mount Rainier. Yes, I am. I'm a pilot. I look at clouds all the time. I'll show you in a few minutes how I can recognize that. Well, his final point is that apparently it does need to be explained. Well, to some perhaps. At least you have an excuse. Well, actually, it's not self-evident, Bob. Not if you rigorously investigate possibilities of why or how this could be happening. You know what's going on? The top of the mountain is actually above the clouds. So, and what we see there is a shadow cast from the top of the mountain. You see, it's impossible to cast a shadow on the underside of clouds when the object that's casting the shadow, the top of the mountain, is above those clouds. Well, P-Brain, right about now is when I'm going to start to take your lunch money from you. Here is the entire sum of your argument. You have shadows of mountain peaks on clouds that are located below the mountain peak. Nobody disagrees that that happens. Let me show you where your basic misunderstanding is, though. You seem to be under the impression that because you found a photograph of Mount Rainier with clouds below the peak, that the clouds are always below the peak. Do you not realize that clouds form at different altitudes? Do you even know how clouds form? Let me help you out here with 30 seconds of meteorology. Now I think the first thing that I really have to do is I have to help you out to identify different types of clouds. There are three basic levels of clouds. There are low altitude clouds, mid altitude clouds, and high altitude clouds. We are going to concentrate just on the low altitude clouds because that's what you're putting in your photographs. If you look at these clouds, you'll notice that their bases are approximately the same elevation above the ground. There's a reason for that. You know, you can pause the video if you wish and look at that chart in more detail, but let me give you the basics of it. If the temperature at my local airport is 20 degrees Celsius and the dew point is 10 degrees Celsius, we have something called a dew point spread of 10 degrees, the difference between 10 and 20. I know that we have something called a, 
adiabatic lapse rate. As we go up in altitude, the temperature drops approximately 2 degrees centigrade for every 1,000 feet. Now, if I go up 5,000 feet, my temperature on the ground at 20 degrees is going to drop to 10, and it's going to meet the dew point temperature. And if there's moisture in the air, a cloud will form there. In that situation, the cloud basis will be at approximately 5,000 feet. If my temperature is 25 degrees and the dew point is 5 degrees, you can simply do the math and see that the cloud basis will be 10,000 feet above the ground. This changes from day to day. So here's the bottom line. Given the fact that clouds change every single day, the fact that you have pictures of clouds below the summit of mountains is irrelevant. Furthermore, to bring you back into focus, let's go back to what we are talking about, and that's this photograph right here, which you used in your presentation. I told you earlier that I would tell you how we would know that the summit of this mountain was below the clouds. Let me give you several examples and why the sun is below the level of that summit. First of all, from the bottom of the photograph all the way up to the peak, you can see the entire mountain. There are no clouds there. The clouds are above the mountain, and you can see clear sky above the peak of the mountain. The shadow does not begin at the peak of the mountain. It begins on the clouds above it. If the shadow was going down, it would appear on the side of the mountain on the non-sunward side of the peak. We don't see that. Furthermore, we see the bottom side of the clouds are lit up, and there are shadows approaching us on the side of the cloud that is towards us. Look at the clouds. You can clearly see it. Now, this photograph was taken at my office looking a little bit southwest at 9 p.m. I want you to notice my truck there. You see the reflection of my wife's headlights in that rear fender. That's because it was relatively dark out. But what I want you to look at is the pattern of light on the clouds. They are clearly lit underneath. And if you look at the top surface of those clouds, they're in darkness. And that is because on the spherical Earth, which rotates, Sunset occurs when the sun is rotating below the horizon in the west. It is angling up at those clouds, even though it is dark on the ground where I am. The only possibility is casting a shadow down on the clouds, and that's what I'm going to show you in this video. I'm going to prove to you that the sun is always higher than the peak of the mountains. And I'm going to show you that this shadow that you think is going up is not going up. It can't be going up. It's impossible for it to physically, actually be angled up. It's only visually angling up. Okay, so we're going to do a little experiment here. I've got the cover for my precision scale, and I've got a figurine in it that clears the top. I put a styrofoam disc on top, which is relatively thin, and another figurine on top of that. Now I'm lowering a light from high above to ground level. Look at the pattern of the shadow on the disc. Now, no distinct shadow from the top figure, but when it clears the disc, look at this. And there's your Mount Rainier photograph, right there. You know, if you only did some experiments once in a while, you wouldn't have this confusion that you must have. So let's look at the whole setup. There's the lower figurine, there's the disc, and the top figurine. No surprises here. Inclusion because you don't understand perspective. You're making an amateurish declaration, especially for a self-proclaimed science guy who should know enough to investigate more rigorously a visual phenomenon such as this. Well, he had a lot more drivel in there about sunsets and perspective and things like that, but I think we've pretty well beat him to death. Now, I don't know what's funnier, the fact that he came back for more uh, without learning anything in the interim, or the fact that people like Sleeping Warrior and Phuket Word 
And a bunch of little flurfs decided to mirror this video and give him words of encouragement. It's almost like they're egging him on to throw himself on his sword. Well, pea brain, here you go. Remember this? Now I've got two. Guys, take care from Northern Michigan. This is Bob the Science Guy. Thank you very much for stopping by. And, and guys, make sure you stop by and tell P Brain he got his butt kicked again. Hey guys, take a moment, hit that little like and subscribe and the bell icon down in the corner. We just passed 15,000 and we're still going strong. Take care.